Peggy Person. And I'm Scott Park. And we are coming to you from the coffee shop. This morning, it is uh, Sunday, July 7th, the first day of my 10-day vacation, which I'll get to oh, later. Man, um, and we are at Fonte Coffee Roasters and Wine Bar, which is in, it's downtown Seattle, and we're right across the street from the Seattle Art Museum. Um, and I gotta say, this is the most like a shishi coffee shop we've been to yeah, so far. It is definitely uppity. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, not in a bad way. It is definitely high, higher class. Yeah, uh, it's really like fancy. Like they have really the music sounds like it's probably a mix they did themselves to like create kind of like an ultra lounge vibe. Yeah, it is. It is. I like it. it's kind of a groovy little fusion going on. Mm -hmm. um, it was a little bit of a missed accident because I was trying to find a place something that was a little bit more gritty. And oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were aiming for Georgetown and we ended up with like, this is the kind of place like you'd take your mom for breakfast before uh, going to the art museum. Because it looks like they have like really fancy uh, food and stuff. Actually, to tell you the truth, I'd be afraid to come in here if I wasn't, if I wasn't an accident. <laughs> really, honestly, it's just a little bit more upscale than yeah. what I'm used to. Yeah, I'd but feel cool. a little underdressed myself. Um, and I was a little bit concerned about talking or raising a ruckus, but you know what? Uh -huh. Screw it. That's I know. the way it goes, right? It's true. It's true. Um, I know. I'm, I'm really self-conscious about that sometimes. Like, other times, if it seems like other people are also being like boisterous I don't mind but if I, I'm like the one asshole in the corner like laughing and being I'm stupid I'm a little envious of them actually because <laughs> I'm like oh man I, 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 that's where beer is really good for me because I, it just it breaks down any last filter I have yeah yeah and, and coffee revs me up but it does me too um, so the last time we saw you, you were actually marching in the Gay Pride Parade. How I was. How was that? Was that it good? was really fun. It was really exhausting. Like, it was, what, like 85 degrees, which yeah. for Seattle is very hot. Uh, for my Las Vegas friends, they scoff at 85. <laughs> but in Seattle, I think it's it has something to do with the humidity and also just the act, like, acclimatization. But 90 feels like the hottest it could ever right. possibly be. Right. It, well, in a way, too, it's we don't just gradually go into 85. It's like 50 right. the day before, then 85 the next day. So it's right. like a 30-degree change, which yeah. is pretty dramatic. Like today, this morning, it's really cold outside, and I'm wearing, like, flip-flops and a short sleeve shirt. And I was like, right. Why? it's July. Like, don't – I'm fine with if it's going to stay cold or if it's going to stay hot. But the jumping, like – and right. probably by noon, it'll be, you know, yeah, 20 degrees – Warmer. It's supposed to be like in the 70s. Yeah, be, which uh, is perfect for me. But, um, so the parade, we, uh, yeah, because it was so hot, the two-mile route or whatever felt like 10 miles, and by the time I got to the end, I was so just dehydrated and exhausted. Um, and then we ended, we walked from actually right in this neighborhood, um, we lined up a university, or wait, spring and fork, and then walked all the way down to the uh, Seattle Center, and then they had. Did you guys end up at the Seattle Center? No. I thought about calling you, but I had like I my cell was a, service was crazy. There's a, there's a festival going on down there. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. where they had like the all the booths and stuff. Oh, okay. Um, you're it, it's probably you're probably happy you didn't go because it was such like just like a total shit storm of people and just like crammed everywhere and tons of booths and like super long lines for everything right. and so i stood around for about 20 minutes ended up talking to the workers socialist candidate for mayor <laughs> her name's mary oh. she was just like on the corner with like a little stand and i ended up chatting with her for a while she was a really interesting person um maybe possibly crazy but i'm not sure but uh she works at a factory in kent oh. and like her whole platform is um, modeling after explicitly modeling after Cuba, like oh really, all of Cuba's like their revolution, their um, all of their policies. Like she's like we should be doing that. And I thought, like as I'm like reading her brochure on my cab ride home, I was like, do you understand like what happened in Cuba? Because like all the people who thought it was this great communist revolution that was going to be for the people got totally screwed and yeah. it ended up being a totalitarian state. Yeah. Like how, to me it was like a total like 
blind view of the last 30 years of history. Right. Anyway, I was like, well, it's a nice idea, but, like, we've never seen that play out in a way that doesn't end up in a totalitarian state. Right, right. So, like, this idea of this movement from the people always turns into the exact opposite of what There's pretty people much think only it is. one government that's a really good socialist democratic type of government isn't it the swiss government or something like that it's like i think they're i think well they're technically a capitalist state but they just state. have like such, such a but like they're such a they're, social they have so right. many social their programs. meter is like at 50 percent right you know like they're not necessarily a, a socialist state but i think compared to us we might call them that right but, but they yeah. still have a free market right. in some senses so right. Probably more of a free market than like China or well, more of a, a like a, a lived free market because China obviously has a free market, but right. they technically don't, right? right. <laughs> they they go no, we don't have a free market, and then like clearly they, have, they have a free market. Yeah, they have that one of the fastest growing economies. Yeah, and, and they're making more millionaires what every day totally. than the rest of the world. So, um, but yeah, that. Uh, anyway, so she was really interesting and fun to talk to. Um, we talked about um, jobs for people with disabilities because right. I was just asking questions. Um, and then I went home. <laughs> I tried to find my friend and like my phone was acting really weird. Uh, and then I was like, yep, I'm done. And it was I like 2 o'clock. Time to go to bed. I see <laughs> Yeah, it was quite interesting. Uh, uh, the dikes on bikes was pretty cool. I like oh, that. I love that, was, that. Totally. That took like, but that took like twenty five or thirty minutes for them to yeah, get through. Yeah, they milk it. Like, don't they like zigzag really yeah, deeply yeah. through and, and then, uh, take a lot of time? Then the, then the mostly naked rollerbladers. <laughs> <laughs> we seen one guy eat shit really bad. Oh, and I was awesome. like, oh my god. I, I mean, that's the thing. I, would, I mean, I understand. I support him and for, you know, his rights and whatnot. But, right. dude, you can put a little bit of protection on yourself. And right. Those, you're going to have that's my, Well, that's the thing. I'm, I haven't seen the rollerbladers. I've seen the ones that ride, do the bike ride. Oh, and to me. Intense, too. I'm like, A, you always do it during the summer, so you're going to get sunburned. And B, to me, it is such nonsense. Like, if, like, I, I, don't, I don't care if people are nude. I think it's actually kind of hilarious to be, like, to have a person be in public nude. Because it's so not a big deal to me that, like, like at first you're like, oh, they're nude. And then you're just like, oh, they're nude. Who cares? Like, yeah, it's right. not a big deal. Obviously, they're not bothered by it. Right. You know, I, I just think that the people was, who do the bike ride are full of shit. Like, I don't think they're, I think they're just like, you know what would be really funny? If we rode around on bikes with no clothes on. Like, I don't think they're legitimate nudists. Well, I think they're <laughs> nonsense nudists. They had socks on their dinglings. So. Oh, don't. yeah. I saw one guy with, like, a flesh-colored G-string that was lace up the front. And I was like, really? He also had a mullet. It was awesome. He, I decided he was my favorite person of the day. I was actually really surprised to see how many um, corporations were out to support, uh, too. Yeah. And that, to me, is kind of smart for them to come out mm -hmm. and say it. Because... The gay, the gay community has a lot of buying power, and it doesn't totally. pay to alienate them. Yeah, you know. So I like, I dig it. Yeah. I dig it. It's it's a good move on their part. To it is. To um, I just yeah. wish the parade was more parady. Like I found it to be, and I was actually talking to my friend who didn't go to the parade, and she was like, I don't go because it's kind of boring. Like it's like a couple of drag queens that look really interesting. A couple of like the pirate ship is really fun. But, like, most of it's just, like, a car with some people in it waving, and it's kind of, like, dull. It was very political. Yeah. Very political. And I and wish there was, like, some floats or, like... There was um, one. Like, yeah, there was one. And that, or just, like, some more, like, visual thing that's fun, because it's a gigantic parade, yeah. and there are thousands of people watching it. I found it ironic how many religious groups were there too I I was like, we were wow. right in front of the mormons for marriage equality group and i was like oh how like, cute you are yeah, hope none like, of you are paying tithing because yeah. <laughs> if you're giving money to a group that actively disagrees with you and does political things to like oppose you to me right. that's it's, not really being it's for just marriage weird. equality it just, it just like <laughs> it, it was so ironic to me yeah because it's I think it's smart, though, and I think that's the next step, because now it's, like, um, being 
anti-gay is so outside of the mainstream and the right. only holdouts are the churches. And uh, really, like, the Methodist church has had openly gay ministers for a super long time, like, almost a decade. Right. I and, um, well, the Unitarians have always not cared. Um, there's a few other churches that have, like, really big movements within them to right. to be the, the church that just goes, you know, when I say church, I mean, like, one of the really big ones. Like, if, if say, like, Southern Baptists just were, like, one day they were, like, you know what? We don't, we no longer care. And they just, like, completely supported gay rights. I think everyone would join that church. And whoever's, like, the first really big group to switch on that, I think, will um, survive. You know, yeah. and the same thing happened with, like, desegregation in this country. Is like, all, right. all the churches were like, no way, like, God wants people to be separate. And then once one of them fell, it was just like a domino parade. Because you can't, like, you can't hold out in those antiquated ideas when right. social progression is going a different direction. Exactly. So I'm yeah. just waiting for it. Because really, like, have you guys heard the Macklemore? I don't know if it's Macklemore or Macklemore. Mac. Ma- I've heard it. Macklemore. Yeah, um, his it. song, what is it? I can't change. One love. One yeah. is it called One Love? Mm-hmm. It. I. I've heard it maybe like five times in the last three days, and I think it's like, it's not that great of a song, but it gives me like goosebumps every time I hear it because it's so like inspiring and yeah. full of love. It doesn't. It's not exactly. It also bridges other adverse like. Mm-hmm. Uh, a guy I work with, he actually likes it a lot because he's black. He grew up yeah. with the adversity of being black, and that's like, and that's what I I mm-hmm. cued on it too. And we are, uh, my wife and I, we're of a mixed marriage as mm-hmm. well. And that's uh, today today's day and age. It's not so much, but I ran into issues, not really like really hardcore, right? But like I've, I've been to a bank and somebody asked me, "Oh, is that an Italian name on her?" You know, on the ledger. Huh. And I was like, "No, she's Asian." And and all of a sudden, boom! I got it was like the lady switched. Weird. Like, like they did a one eighty on me. So it kind of I, I understand yeah. where that comes from, and it's kind of it is inspiring to to hear songs like that and hear totally. your artists come out and. And say something, like, right. really, which I think the reason, like, like you were saying in that song, he really talks about, you know, like, what's, like, what's not necessarily wrong with the hip-hop community, but what he sees as, like, right. why are we so negative toward each other? Right. And, like, in all aspects, and I thought, I just, like, that song to me is, like, so cool. You can actually find him on SoundCloud. Oh, yeah, you yeah. can find him on SoundCloud. Yeah. I, I noticed that. And, and so, like... Like, that's a mainstream song that's being played on the radio all over right. the country. And, like, you just, you can't, and and it's been coming for a super long time, but I think at this point, like, if you're that one last holdout, you're going to be feeling really right. stupid in ten years. Because right. yeah. things change so quickly. In a way, I've heard somebody say, grow up, get yeah. over it. If you, uh-huh. you're not, if it, you're not doing it, don't worry about it. Yeah. It's not really affecting you. As a matter of fact, if you embrace it, it's probably going to help promote you. Mm-hmm. You know, because you're going to you're going to come off as being the bigger person, or right. or you know, somebody who's not a dick. Yeah, totally. You know? Well, I had a friend. Um, I think it was my friend Becky. A long time ago, we were talking um, after I left my church, but she was my friend like before, and we like we used to sing in um, the jazz group in Tri Cities right. together. And so she kind of knew me throughout my whole 20s of, like, a lot of different changes. And we were talking one day, because she also had joined the Mormon church while we were friends. Right. um, And then kind of stayed in it for a little while and then stopped going. And and we were talking about it one day. And she was like, you know, the thing about religion is it just creates a whole bunch of separations between other people. And when you're inside it, you don't see it because you have your group and your group feels really good because you can all like pat each other on the back for being right about everything. And you, you all think the same way and supposedly and all these things. But then once you like stop your, your clinging to the group, you realize that the group is keeping you from all of these other people. And I didn't realize that until I stopped going to church that like people, like treated me differently and I think I treated them differently it's almost like a mob it was very mentality. weird you oh get for that sure mob mentality going, you know, everybody, yeah it's yeah I, I I can't remember the last time I was in church but it's <laughs> been a long time I gotta yeah. say I was a teenager and I, I remember hearing the uh, cause I'm I'm born 
I was my mom was never married, mm-hmm. and so I remember hearing the preacher one time. I, I, I gotta remember that I was a little hungover sitting in church. <laughs> and I was a teenager. I was with my, my aunt and uncle, and I remember him him saying about uh, talking about being born out of wedlock and stuff like that. Oh, and yeah. How you're pretty much doomed to go to hell and stuff right. like that. And I'm like. Like, I don't know what it's I just got, and I never met this is the first time I think I was in their church yeah. and there was some some lighthouse of I don't know, yeah some, some well like even that. like you know Elizabeth smart the the girl in Utah who got um, kidnapped a few years ago do you remember Elizabeth oh, smart yeah, the young and then they found her she was kidnapped by like these super crazy cult people in Utah um, and she was hiding, like, they found her, they were keeping her in, like, a cave, like, less than a mile, or not, like, a cave, but, like, a dugout shack, um, less than a mile from her house for, like, years. Do you remember this story? It was well, all over the news. in the back, and then they, they, yeah. they basically would have, they, she had kids and stuff with the guy, or? Um, I think, that the same I don't one, think she no? had kids, I think she took care of his other wife's kids or something like that. I don't think uh, she... Because she was only I'm, like 11 when they kidnapped her. And then when they found her, she was like 14. Oh, okay. This is a different one. I'm, yeah. I'm thinking one. She was like in her 20s. Yes. So that was in Cleveland. That's uh, such... With the, yeah. the really awesome black dude who like everyone was making fun of. And seriously, it made me cry. His like... His like... I mean, he seemed drunk, but he was like, oh, I had to help him. And like, right, I right. don't want a reward. Like, give the reward to the people who were you know right, kept right. for years like it seriously like made me tear up because he's so like an awesome person like I just like people who are cool no I'm talking about Elizabeth uh, Smart though Smart. Okay. she anyway she um, she was held captive by this totally crazy dude and like he raped her and stuff right and about six months ago she came out about against abstinence only education and her explanation was as a victim of rape To hear things about, like, my value as a person because I've had sex is so destructive to me that, like, this should never be taught. And I was just like... What a uh, how old is she cool now? She's like a thing to do. Stuff. Yeah, she's like 17 or 18 now. You know I think she I went like away to college. Because like, those are the things you don't think about. Like, you think, oh, well, we want to promote this good society, so we're going to set up all these rules. But then you also have the people who don't conform to those rules through no fault of their own and if you're if you're perpetuating an idea that that like denigrates them as a human being right. like how is that something that's good for society well, you know I, not only that it's like she had just taking a tragedy and yeah. using it to do something better with mm-hmm. it and it's instead of like letting it cripple her and basically totally. become another burden on punk society mm-hmm. she's actually taking that message out and you know it may be you know, I, not everybody's going to agree with it, but, you know, screw them. They didn't yeah. go through what she went through. Yeah. Totally. And if anybody can say that, she can, because her story is so public and right. she's such a figure that she was like, you know what? I don't think it's a good thing for people because you don't know what they go through. And maybe, you know, if you're teaching this, like, abstinence idea that, like, it says something about your value as a human, whether you've had sex or not, which I think is, like, one of the most destructive ideas. And, it, like, I think we as, like adults like oh but we don't want our teenagers having sex They're it's like well it. <laughs> i know they are going to do it and who cares like really we've teenagers. we've gone through they millions got... of years of evolution with teenagers having sex right. we've managed to populate the earth this time. Totally. <laughs> like, this like really so there are better things to worry about in life than like something like that your own business I, right just, exactly just be you know, I'll bring up my son real quick. You know, <laughs> I, I, from my age, and not about sex, but just right. like just about his peer pressure and whatnot. Mm-hmm. I've always talked to, I've been open with him, say, you know, this is, you're going to run into this. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm just going to let you know, I'm not here to tell you not to do it. But just understand or hear these words that I'm telling you now when it comes across and just make a, a, a try to make an educated decision about mm-hmm. what you're going to do and if you do make choices that are that might land you into a sticky situation just call me and i'll come and get you no questions asked nice yeah and, yeah and, totally and I, said, I don't know if it will work mm-hmm. but it's something that's a tool that i never had growing yeah. up too i had to like there's sometimes i came home i'm like 
what did I do and where did it, you know, who was I with? Mm-hmm. I mean, I woke up in places like, oh my God, <laughs> I had to sneak out. Yeah. You know? And so it's, I don't want him to go through that because it's actually kind of scary if yeah. I go backwards and look at it. At the time, I was being a teenager and I was like, it's like right. I'm rebelling and I'm going to drink <laughs> and I'm going to meet people and I'm going to, you know, now, now, I mean, that I've, I've built social skills upon that, but. Right. I think that's good, though. I try to do that with all my nieces and nephews, where at a certain point, when they're maybe like 10, I just say, hey, someday you're going to need me because your mom's a pain in the ass, (laughs) and I will be there for you. (laughs) Not that my sisters are all pains in the ass, but I always say that, and they go, yeah, because, like, you always think your mom's a pain in the ass. Right. And so far, like, I have a few few nieces and nephews who've taken me up on it, you know? Like, they come to me. Yeah, my oldest, actually, my oldest niece is 26. She's in the military. She has a baby. But I don't know her that well because she's the daughter of one of my oldest adopted brothers and sisters. Actually, that's not even the oldest. The oldest is Christina, and she's like, she's like, yeah, she's maybe 25, 20. Yeah, so there's a couple that are really close in age, and I can't remember which one's the oldest. But um, they, like, my older, older brothers and sisters are on the East Coast and have been there since I was, like, eight. And so I I don't know their kids. But um, but I'm friends with my great niece. No, wait. No, I'm friends with my. Get, you need to get a family reunion. See <laughs> I, how big, just I get know it would be yeah. fun. No, I'm friends. No, he's just my nephew. I was thinking he was my great nephew, but he's not. I'm friends with him on Facebook, but I've never met him in person. But my my oldest West Coast nephew is 22. Wow. So, but yeah, I'm actually really, going to hang out with him this weekend. You're not really that far removed in ages, actually. You're just, no, like, no. Maybe 10, 12 nine, years. 12 yeah. years, yeah. That's, yeah, he that's was born amazing. when I was 12, and they lived um, less than a block from our house. Yeah. Um, his mom and her husband. Yeah. And so, uh, like, I took care of him as a baby, which they actually lived in our house, I think, for maybe like six months after he was born. So I've known him from zero, like, literal zero. All the way through adulthood. Wow. He's my bro. Like, we have good times. Yeah. Because, like, I'm going to stay with his mom when I go to the Tri-Cities on Monday. And, um, but I'll probably just hang out with him the whole time, so. I do this. I got similar. I got an uncle that's similar. Mm -hmm. My, my uncle David, Gwen's husband, Husband. quote, unquote. Quote, unquote, husband. Uh, Yeah. (laughs) We're only 10 years different. Mm -hmm. So, we spent a lot of time. That's the same guy I spent time with with when he was going through his divorce and whatnot. Oh, yeah. Totally. Yeah. We're, so we're really... We don't see each other as much because I moved away from the cul-de-sac. Mm-hmm. That's the cul-de-sac, yeah. the one with all the houses on it. Yeah, we're, nice. I'm gonna. I'm, I think I'm gonna commission to just have a sign made <laughs> and put it right in the corner of the cul-de-sac saying Clark's. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. So, what did you guys end up doing? Um, I saw on Facebook you had about a billion pictures of you off having fun while I was working all week. <laughs> well, kind of okay. We had that fan page, you know. Uh huh. Uh, from the coffee shop and I'm like well I'm trying to get people to like encourage I'm trying to right. encourage them to post stuff and, and maybe comments and stuff so what I'm doing I'm just kind of like, yeah. like seeding it I like that and we went uh, this last 4th of July uh-huh. we went up to uh, oh let's the day before we went to Emerald Downs to watch the, the display uh, Emerald Downs okay. is a racetrack oh okay it's a racetrack horse race track horse in, um, races okay yeah and I'm we and we when we lived there we would go get close and uh-huh. never go inside the park oh, and we watched okay. it from the outside. This year we decided let's go inside. Yeah, it was an experience. I mean, it was, um, did you bet on any of the races? No, I don't uh, gamble. I, yeah, my grandfather, <laughs> my grandfather, had, had, if he was still alive, would probably we would, he would teach me how to do it. But yeah, I don't know. It just, <laughs> No, I'm with you. I think it's. I think actually gambling is boring, but um, the, like I don't get excited about winning or not winning, and so to me it's just throwing money down a toilet. If you win, it's really cool, but it's there's yeah. A, I, I want to guarantee I'm going to get money back. That's right. what I want. I, I look at it as like a like a short term investment. Mm-hmm. I want a return on my investment, <laughs> and uh, so yeah. So we did that, and I, I got a really good beer, uh, Shock Top. Shock I like shock tops. It was. I don't know if you've seen the picture, but I uh, posted a couple 
They had a Volkswagen with a Mohawk on the top of it. And they had oh, a big I didn't tap, see that. Cake tap uh-uh. out of the back. Oh, it was really cool. I just, nice. And so we did that. Um, sat in traffic after that. Mm. After that was all done. And then uh, the fourth, we pretty much got our fireworks fix in. So we really mm-hmm. didn't. Oh, no. I never go out to fireworks on the 4th of July. Like, I, last year, I went over to my brother's house, and we, um, we watched it on TV, and we kept flipping back and forth between Independence Day and the fireworks ceremony, which was, I thought was really funny. Oh, the and movie this, Independence Day? Yeah, oh, yeah. Cool. I love watching It's always on, like, USA or yeah. TNT or something. And then this year, I just went home, like, sleep. Yeah. Like, I, I'm, I'm, fireworks are, like, you can see them any time, really. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, we, uh, and one thing we almost never do is stay home. Oh, yeah. Yeah, uh, we always Yeah, I've noticed. You guys are always out. Well, especially, <laughs> especially on the 4th of July, we always get invited to barbecues, mm-hmm. not, which I don't mind. Um, so we went up and, uh, we decided just to stay in because we had to work the next morning, mm, which yeah. is horrible. Uh, I stayed up way too late. That sucks. I ended up staying up to, like, one. And I was just like, and I was a little drunk, <laughs> and I was, so I was hungover at work. Oh, that sucks. But a funny thing, uh, I'll post it up on the fan page, too. We got, when I was open, because we bought a little kit for our son to light up. And then he gets disinterested, and we bought the kit, he's like, I want to blow stuff up. Okay, so I bought the little fireworks kit. Yeah. Spent, spent like 80 bucks, which was really weak. Mm. Fireworks. I was a little bit disappointed, but when yeah. I'm opening them up, I'm reading them as I open them up, and there's one in there called the Golden Shower. Oh. I was like, oh, how nice. And she's like, he, I showed it to my wife, Kanita, and, and she's like, she's like, oh, I don't get it. And Keegan had, he got a 13 year old son because he starts explaining it to her what it means. And he's, I'm like, all right, dude, you're no longer allowed on the internet. <laughs> That's so funny. Do you remember, like, see, that's the thing also that I think about fireworks is boring to me, is like the, like, it's it's nice to see, you know, the fireworks in the sky, but the fun part is setting them off yourself. Right. And, like, the, it, I don't know, like, you can't get the good ones anymore, and if you do, then... You gotta, go to, the do, you gotta then, go to the reservation, yeah. And then there's always, like, a million people um, setting off, like, really big ones in really small areas, like, between buildings and stuff. Yeah, it sounds like a uh, war. Totally. My, um... It's all echoing and stuff. Yeah, which I think, I don't think anyone was setting off fireworks in the alley by my house, but the, the sound was bouncing off the buildings, and it sounded like someone standing just full swinging away with a baseball bat on the dumpster. Like, that was the noise it made. Was That's wow. literally what it sounded like was just some dude was just, like, Wailing on smashing it. the dumpster with a baseball bat. And I'm sure it was just, like, sound waves ricocheting off uh, things. They might have been Maybe. off fireworks, firecrackers <laughs> in the dumpster. No, I don't think so, because you couldn't hear the other noises. Uh, so I think it was from far away. Oh, uh, yeah. But, uh, Those alleys tend to, they reverb everything yeah, they do. down them. Yeah. Totally. So that was a little bit annoying. Um while I was doing nothing at home. <laughs> well, one of our things we did, too, that's on the 4th, we actually were planning on going down to Ruston Way in Tacoma and just kind of hanging out down there and seeing what What's that? Doing. It's a it's a strip. It's kind of like Alpay. Mm-hmm. It's like... Uh, like beachy? Uh, yeah, not really beachy. Right? Yeah, it's, it's a walk that goes along the, uh, the Puget Sound in Tacoma. And it's, there's a bunch of food food restaurants nothing really other than just to hang out and eat yeah uh, and they, they this year they close off the entire strip you can park down there for a fee but mm-hmm. we just kind of hung up hung out in a little town or little uh what do you call that a little community called stadium oh yeah yeah and then we ended up finding this little bar or actually a little pizza joint called mm-hmm. the hub Oh, I saw those pictures. That place looked really cool. <laughs> right, and they're expanding, actually. I told them I was going to talk about it. And uh, the guy, his name's... Uh, uh, it'll come to me in a minute. Finn. Finn. Hmm. Finn, from, <laughs> Finn from Arizona. Kind of, He's a 26-year-old dude. Kind of interesting. And uh, so we, we ended up talking to him. And the building below, they it was a restaurant above. And below is the Harmon Tap Room, which I'd been in before. Mm-hmm. And I've seen some shows there, and they they they're really cool. They have right on. they have Monday they have movie nights on I think Tuesday nights all winter oh, long. Cool. That's cool. And then they also have the Harmon Brewery, which is a little bit further down than by the University of Tacoma. 
Uh, okay. No, University of Washington Tacoma. Oh yeah, yeah. totally. And they're really. And I love craft beer. It's yeah. Just, you drink one. You know you drank one. It's, <laughs> I don't get these people that drink Bud Light, Coors uh, Light. No, it's I like, don't either. You and gotta, I don't. You drink, 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 drink. Right. And I'm like, I just spent like nineteen dollars on eight beers, and yeah. I'm full. Totally. I don't even have a buzz. Yeah, I can't. I can't drink a lot of beer because of that. What you're saying that I get full before I catch right. a buzz, and then it seems pointless to me. When I'm like, I could have had like three glasses of wine and been right. less uncomfortable, and like, and my hands swell up when I drink too much beer because oh, I right. think of all the carbs in it or something. It's, you might have a slight but wheat allergy. Maybe I don't yeah. know. But, like, um, my hands just feel, like, really uncomfortable when I drink a lot of beer. Yeah. yeah. So you, I don't, I tend to water, not. Retaining water from yeah. the, probably the carbs and all that. Probably. Yeah. So I, I tend to, you know, every once in a while it's, like, the only thing that sounds good is just, like, a really good beer. Like, I get, like, a weird, random, like, twice a year craving where I'm like, oh, I totally want to, like, go get like a six pack of Corona or something, right. which I really like Corona. I don't know why. It's, um, it's so good to me. Or like a Guinness. Like every yeah. once in a while, I'll just be like, ah, oh, I totally want a Guinness. Especially the colder it is. I think the oh, beer, yeah. the, you know, when it's like beer, it's really cold. It's always totally. warm outside. I love that. And, yeah, and they had really But good, most of the time I don't drink it's, beer. It was a good combination. Nice beer with the, uh, with a pizza and... It was nice. It was, cool. uh, yeah, uh, it was kind of cool. And that's in Tacoma? Yeah, the it's hub. Tacoma. Yeah, up there, uh, yeah. just off of St. Helens. Right on. Uh, and they're moving into Geek Harbor. Uh, Finn, the, the, our, our waiter, is actually going to be bartending, open, doing the opening of the hub in Geek Harbor. Right is it on. Harbor? Yeah. That's cool. I had to refer to my sources. <laughs> and um, then you also had another. Um, where was that monkey place? I oh, saw the pictures that, that you okay. put up, the this little, like, Rasta monkeys. <laughs> this is a co-worker's wife. This oh, okay. is actually... I, oh, I, I, I don't really feel, but this is... I. This is the same guy that gave me the the link to the Craigslist ad that met, oh. led me to meet you. Okay. This is his wife, and she has wild and whimsical mm-hmm. art, and... It is. I really like the way she does her art, and that, it's, that she does the pictures of the sock monkey. Yeah. And and then she also has. It's it's really clean. I like the way her art is. It's mm-hmm. uh, like she had a bunch of skull and crossbones and stuff there. And cool. Yeah, her name's Krista Jefferson. Hmm. And, and there's uh, pictures on our. I noticed the picture yeah. you put on our on our fan page has the the URL really clear on right. it. So if anybody wants to find it, you can go because right. it's like. It has some hyphens in it, right? Right, right. <laughs> so you might want to just look at the picture. Wild dash and dash yeah. whimsical dot com. Yeah. yeah, you go there and she'll do commission work too. Cool. And I thought about um, having her maybe design a uh, business card. That's yeah, one thing that I would really be great. want to get on because yeah, we, we'll, I, I find myself talking. I was handwriting totally. out a lot of information. Yeah, we definitely and, need to talk about that because I think that's a great idea. Um, so cool. Yeah, I liked. I thought those. I thought those um, monkey things were really cool. Yeah. I was like, uh, oh, that's so cool. Right away, there was like, uh, as soon as I posted it, some my neighbor actually. Uh huh. My neighbor is a house, uh, house down. He's like, oh, those are those sock monkeys. Where can I get one? Yeah. I'm like, see, this is what I'm talking about. It's like. You just, it's almost, if you get, oh. well, another thing too, let me get off on this real quick. I, <laughs> when I go and I, I, I see on our fan page, it gives you a breakdown of how things are being shared. Oh, yeah, yeah. And what does going viral mean? What does that mean? Because there's what been, there's some that has like a viral. Like oh, it's like, I think that's if, if it gets we share it and then someone else shares it and then yeah, like, and they, and I then, think that's the viral because we have thing some of it. Things, so. We have some things that have actually gone viral cool. a couple times. Nothing right huge. I mean, it's like right. two or three viral, yeah. but I'm like... But that's cool to me. I know. I like that. Well, my friends all the time tell me, like, they, they'll be like, so what's this thing that's on your thing? And they're always talking about, like, pictures of your stuff. Because I haven't posted any pictures yet. Honestly, the reason is I've been working all week. Yeah. And so... And I thought I... Did I post pictures from Pride? I intended on it, but I didn't. So I will it's post some late. pictures yeah, from Pride. Yeah. Um, just because I got a really... A couple of really I funny pictures. But your, your pictures were way better than mine. Really? I don't remember really taking that many pictures. Uh, <laughs> Nina did. 
Oh, maybe they were your pictures. Yeah. Maybe. One I of the remember. two of you posted took, like oh, 60 you know or what? 90 no, pictures. that was me. That was me. And I, they were I, all I, really good because you were like right in the middle of the parade. I so took, you saw I like... Took, like uh, enough, I, I took pictures until my phone went dead. Yeah, totally. I did. And, and then, one of them was of Jane and Petey who were the Grand right. Marshals who are my friends from the Women's Chorus. Right, yeah. They're original Women's Chorus members and they're like the sweetest ladies. And during the whole, like, not only this last voting on marriage equality, but the whole build-up before right. then, they were one of the first, like, um, public couples that they really, like, they, they were part of some kind of, I think, I don't know if it was human rights campaign or, right. I think it was, but they they basically, like, put them out as spokespeople because they're, like, they've been together for, like, 40 years and they're just, like, the sweetest women. So nobody, like, you cannot, it is impossible to look at them and go, no, you guys shouldn't be allowed to get married. Like, it's impossible because they are the sweetest, it cutest my, couple I, on I, I, earth. Actually, I had tears a couple times when people were walking by, been together totally. for 30 years and just and been able to marry. So I know. Like, oh, my God. I was like, that was, that was, yeah. to me was... Probably the best part about the parade. Yeah. I mean, all the pageantry and all that and yeah. stuff was okay. But like the people with like signs on, I, right. I saw a, um, a couple of guys who I think they were in tuxedos and they had signs on that were like just married, like been together however long. And I, yeah. I kept check at, and then when we talked about kilts earlier that oh. day, so there was a lot of kilts. <laughs> there in the were a lot of kilts. Like, like, you know what? I might get one. You should, totally, you should think about it. Well, I wear I'll get a tattoo and... if you wear a kilt. All right, deal. Uh, <laughs> it's about the same price. Yeah, no <laughs> a, joke. A kilt's like 300 bucks. You know, that's seriously always my deal with the tattoo is I'll, I'll think about it and I'll start going like, oh, actually my nephew, Christopher, um, he and I were supposed to get tattoos a couple years ago. He has a whole bunch of them. Um, and I don't have any. And so I was like picking it all out and then like looked into how much it would cost and I was like... Yeah, I, I'm. I think I can think of about ten other things I'd rather do with that money than get a tattoo. Yeah. So part of it is cheap, part of it is scared, and part of it is lazy. Yeah. And those are the three. That's a pretty big. That's a that's a trio. <laughs> that's a trifecta. That's a trifecta of not yes, getting one. Exactly. Um, but those are the reasons I don't go skiing as well. It's cheap, scared, and lazy. The, you know what? The, the cheap part will stop me before anything else will. Because mm -hmm. like, I'll Ooh. talk myself out of it. That should be the name of my book. I'm going to do a memoir of myself, and it's going to be called Cheap, Scared, and Lazy. Yeah. And it will work. <laughs> you know, yeah, that would work. Because, you know, you can think, think what I want to do and the reason why I didn't do it. And that's it, Cheap, Scared, and Lazy. Which is so not true of me, just because I've done so many expensive, stupid things that were totally scary. Yeah, but I but maybe the irony of is... Yeah, way to go though. I mean, you. I mean, you actually do quite a bit. It's hard. Like, it's hard to maintain, maintain a career. Yeah. And then be. Uh, you're actually active in your community mm -hmm. as well. So yeah, I think so. That's good to do. I mean, that's yeah. really hard. I. I. I love like. I lament my whole entire week because there's so much I want to do, but I, I'm at, I'm in my box and I just yeah. And so when I go when I Friday night comes and she's wanting me to relax and rest, I'm like, no, I need to go. I need to get out. Yeah. I need to, this is what I need to I do. I think you do more things than I do because I like really if I'm not like doing something organized, I'm in my apartment like watching TV, playing video games, like, I'm so a homebody. And then I go on Facebook and I see pictures of you and your family, like, at nine it's different things. We're out of town, and I'm like, I just saw you, and you're already out of town. <laughs> well, it's only because it's, it's come tomorrow, I'm going to uh -huh. be at work for five mm. days, and I'm not going to be doing yeah, shit for the, other than other than moving boxes, and, mm -hmm. I'll, and I work with the same guys. I mean, I like the guys I work with. Yeah. But they're just a bunch of sourpusses, you know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, some of them are okay. Like Mike, he can be on and off my nerves, but he's actually pretty. He's also like me. He's very active on the weekends. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, we seen him yesterday. Hmm. Um, and so, because we went to the movies yesterday. I didn't Ooh, what did you that. see? We went and saw Despicable Me too. Oh, did you like it? It was funny. And cool. of course, they I had to, they really had to, they had to throw in the little. Uh, uh, what was it? Like little 
heartstring puller. Oh thing, yeah, you know? totally. I love the first one. I'm actually, I think I might see Monsters University before Despicable Me too. Be just because double. like Monsters Inc is possibly my all time favorite cartoon. Yeah. Just like every single time I watch it, I, like I both laugh and cry, and oh. it's just so cute and sweet okay. and hilarious. This I love that movie. The part in there when the cat, when the uh, what's her name, Boo. Yeah. She gets in and she goes to that uh, trash compactor, uh-huh. and they play that music, that industrial. And they and the and you see the uh, what's his name, Sully. Uh huh. Sully going through the all the all the the uh, the throes of yeah. agony watching his friend he thinks his friend's getting smashed up totally that takes me back to the old Looney Tunes cartoons. oh yeah it has a lot of those kind of like that I kind of humor in it I love that totally. I love that it, I think I think Monst- uh, Monsters University and Spickle Me 2 would be a great double feature that yeah it would be back to back it would be and they're probably both less than an hour and a half so I bet you could do it in an afternoon yeah and I love, right. I love Steve Carell oh me too yeah, he's, he's so funny yeah and, I adore uh, him. I remember when he, um, the first time I noticed him was the other guy on Bruce Almighty, which, because I'm a big Jim Carrey fan in both an ironic and a non-ironic way. Like, I'm a legitimate fan, but I also like his shitty movies, ironically. So, like, I will see, it's sort of, I think of him as the same as almost Nicolas Cage in right. a weird way. I will see any Jim Carrey movie, whether it's horrible or great. Right. And um, so I saw Bruce Cable Almighty. Guy. Oh my gosh! See, Cable Guy is one of the most brilliant movies I ever love made. It. Yeah. Um, and it's really underrated. But uh, no, I guess not with hipsters. Hipsters get it, but that's okay. So um, I saw Bruce Almighty, which I didn't really like that much. The only thing I liked in it was Steve Carell, and he plays the the other news anchor right. that Jim Carrey like makes his Make, mouth go crazy. Yeah. And I laughed my ass off. And so for like a year, I was like, that really funny guy from Bruce Almighty. And, um, and everybody goes, Jim Carrey? I know. And I'm like, no, the, no, other, the other guy. guy. And then he, you started to see him in more stuff. And then right. I was like, oh, I love this guy. And he was, that was what, so the sequel funny. was Evan Almighty? I know, which yeah. wasn't, was not was great. Okay. Like, it was, uh, yeah, I, but I, I I think I didn't even really like Bruce Almighty that much, but it like recreated all of the jokes, but did them like half as well. Right. But it had a couple parts that I thought were okay. Um, but but they lost the part that made Jim Carrey or not Jim Carrey, Steve, Steve Carell, Carell really funny in the first one. I thought. Yeah. But I think that's just because they like turning a side character into a main character is touchy. It's difficult to do. It is. It Only is. Laverne and Shirley did it truly well. well and it, <laughs> and a lot of times sequels just suck anyway. Yeah, that's true. Sometimes I don't mind them sucking. Like, with The Hangover. I still intend on seeing Hangover 3, even though it has like a 12% on Rotten Tomatoes. Because I don't care if it's good or not. I just want to see more of well, that's, it. Well, that's you know? more like a trilogy. That's, they yeah. That's not like a sequel. A sequel. That's a series of movies. Right. Where it's actually a story. It's still technically a sequel. I saw, uh, I saw Hangover Two on the plane to Thailand. Oh. So and, and that's there was hilarious. A, there was actually a lot of it that was said censored down, even though it was oh, still I'm pretty. Sure. Um, it was still pretty rough. And yeah. My son watched it too. <laughs> Not. I mean, because I fell asleep one time and I woke up. He was watching it. Nice. I was, she wouldn't let him watch it, but. Mm-hmm. It's a pretty racy movie, yeah. and they get a lot of away with a lot of stuff. Like I, um, in the first one, they have all the raunchy stuff in those still photographs, right? At the very, and very they end. use prosthetics so right. they can get away with stuff that's like semi pornographic, right. right. and it's like, well, I don't know if you can like, I don't know. To yeah. me, the rating system is all bogus anyway, it is. but like. I heard you can, they can get around it with money. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. Have you seen that documentary? This movie's not yet rated. It's really, really good. I think I have. It's I'm very sure. entertaining. I'd have, to, I'd have to watch it again. I think yeah. I have. Because the the ideas of it of like basically the guy just like follows and investigates the ratings committee. The idea is really interesting, and the execution is really good. Like I just think it's a really great movie. I love documentaries though. Like I watch maybe like 10 a month 
Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, they're, they're, I like them. I, I have a problem with documentaries. Like I don't watch them as uh, much as you do, but I'm I do obsessed. watch them. I I've watch probably them. seen every documentary on Netflix, and then when new have ones you seen come King up, of Kong? oh, King of Kong, I've seen like That's seven amazing. times. That's amazing. That is actually, I would say, maybe like my top three is like King of Kong, um, Exit Through the Gift Shop, and Dear Zachary are probably like the best movies ever made, and they're all documentaries. Wow. But I made I forced my nephew to watch King of Kong. Now, have you like seen six months ago? Have you seen the um, Jim Brewer one? It's no, not- I I I started watching it, but I had had like three glasses of wine uh, and was like, I'm not gonna make it through this, and so I stopped and I decided to save it for another day. But uh, yeah, no, but I I will watch it one of these days. Yeah, I've been really like I've been watching Psych lately, like the USA sitcom oh, okay. Psych. In no way a good show. Like, it is not yeah. good, and yet I continue to watch it. It's more like I just have it on in the background, because there's, like, six or seven seasons of it, and I'm doing other it's things. It's so weird to show that it isn't very good. <laughs> no, can it's re- not. Can get six or seven seasons. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's I stuff about it money, I like. Actually. But, like, because it's, it's, like, fun sleuthery right. and goofy and kind of funny. But there's so much terribleness in it that, like, it's not... It's a show that my mom would be like, have you seen this great show? She oh. has terrible taste and everything. It's, yeah, my and grandma, I like, think like, it's a show it's my a grandma would like to watch. She, yeah. likes, she likes watching what's another one, Purchase, Person of Interest. Oh, of interest. oh yeah, my mom watches that, yeah, too. My mom will watch every... Anything starring Tom Selleck... And because apparently there's like a Jesse Brown series that stars Tom it's Selleck. It's the Matlock syndrome. Oh. I think anything that has to do with like spy or yes. solving. Why do old people like that? It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Maybe we'll just all hit an age at some point where suddenly we're like so into mysteries. I'm going to take the suicide pill, please. <laughs> I will. Totally. I actually do. I mean, the mystery part of it is not what I like actually because I like, I like the goofiness. Like, there's one episode where, um, and then it's Dulé Hill from uh, The West Wing, which I think is really funny, and he's not good in it at all. Uh-huh. He's so, like, unfunny. But there's an episode where they enter, like, a American Idol-type competition oh, right. as a yeah. duo, duo, and, and then they have a musical that. number where, like, Dulé Hill is playing Michael Jackson, and the other one is, like, <laughs> uh, Richard Marks or something, like, yeah. he has an earring and a mullet. Oh. And it is so funny. And so it has, like, these moments of, like, true hilariousness. But you have to dig through, like, nine episodes to get one moment that's really funny. Yeah. So I think, I think that's what I've been wasting my time on. <laughs> I, I, I had, I, in a way, I guess, me working so much is I don't get to watch a lot of TV. So yeah. it's kind of, that's why I get out and do so much. Yeah. But had I, if my schedule was more relaxed, if I could work an eight-hour shift, I probably would get yeah. lost in television. Totally. I used to be the, I used to get up in the morning extra early, watch the news. Oh, wow. And it would, again, it's almost like sports. Yeah. It would affect me all day long. I'd I know. hear all that negativity and stuff. I know. Especially I know. if you watch local news. Oh, local news is the worst. Like, local TV news in the morning to me, because I, I went through a period where I did that as well, just bums me out. No, yeah, I, I took it to a point, I was like, oh, I need to be informed. No, I'm happier being uninformed. Yeah. I really am. I'm, I'm ignorant of everything, basically, and that's happier. Yeah. But, I do the watch Colbert Report every night after I, I watch the previous days on Hulu when I get home from work. I'm going to have to get that Hulu Plus. because You I, should. I, it's, it's really worth it, it, I think. Yeah. I mean, you can get half the shows for free, but I just like having one place and they just upgraded the Wii interface it's way better now oh so you do you use a Wii yeah I use my Wii and played on the TV and it has auto play now so uh, if you start one episode it will just continue to play uh, almost so like TV almost just almost nice. like a TiVo yeah sort of yeah it remembers what you watched yeah, yeah. And it's only like eight bucks, so yeah, like yeah. Netflix. Netflix uh, again. Now I'm starting. Once I've gone through all their new content, now I'm, <laughs> I'm out of love with them. I know I'm I do that too. I cancel it like every six months and then get it again because I yeah. But I I I have been watching Netflix a lot lately because I just finished Doctor Who. But now that I'm done with Doctor Who, I'm like, man. Well, Hulu is up with the current season. Yeah. yeah. Just, it's you're just a day behind or a week behind. Yeah. Not, not too far behind. Depending yeah. what show it is. Netflix yeah. is always a season behind. Yeah. Always. Yeah. 
Totally. So. But I do Netflix for the movies. Yeah. So. Anyway. Um, so then, I was going to ask you something else. I can't remember what it was. Anyway. It'll come to you in a second. It will. Yeah. Yep. So, oh, I was going to talk about my 10-day vacation. Oh, yeah. So today Shut is up. day one of my 10-day <laughs> vacation. And day one will include a lot of nothing because I'm not doing anything today. Yeah. But then I think I'm going to go visit family and stuff. Yeah. But seriously, like, I'm not really going to do anything. And I'm just going to relax because I need a little bit of a break. My yeah. job kind of wears on me. And I'm like, you know, I'm just going to, like, pretend like I don't have a job and, like, hide my work phone so I'm not even tempted to look at it and you know yeah. like emotionally disconnect from my job so it's gonna be fun times yeah yeah <laughs> it's a good good thing to be a tourist maybe yeah you know, be a tourist in your own that's fun too we, we do that all the time now mm-hmm. it's like again going back to where you have limited time you get out and you just do something that you've been curious about mm-hmm. and I don't know if I could be the down. T- I can probably do a down day one day, but after that, I just uh, go. I get cabin fever. No, I love downtime. Yeah. It's my favorite. I actually hate going places. <laughs> <laughs> I took a four-hour nap yesterday, Ooh, which is really that bizarre. I, I, it's it was it's way out of my character. Oh yeah, well, I was a little hungover, um, and I've been running like crazy since Friday after work. Actually, mm-hmm. since. Wednesday. Yeah. Because Wednesday we got off of work, and then Thursday we ran around, mm-hmm. and then Friday I worked, and then went out again Friday night and did some networking Friday night, nice. which is really cool. I I almost never go out by myself. Yeah, now. right on. And then, um, end up staying up till three, getting get woke up to go see a movie in the morning, and then I just said for Saturday afternoon I got to take a nap. And then yeah. I took a nap. And, I think somebody took pictures of me while I'm just, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, my arms are Kimbo and my, I'm like oh, spread out over the couch. Nice. It'll be on Facebook for sure. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. So that napping is not in my, it's not in my norm. Yeah, me but neither. I'll, I'll do it. I do fall asleep sometimes though, but I don't like to nap because it makes me feel like I have a really hard time waking up, you know? Like I can't do that like 10 minute nap and then feel refreshed. If I fall asleep for 10 minutes, I, like, get up and I'm, like, hot and angry. And I just <laughs> want to go back to I heard sleep. 30 minutes is a prime power nap. And oh, if you I cannot up, sleep for 30 minutes only. I have to then what sleep happens, all night. What happens to me, if I, if I feel myself falling asleep, uh-huh. I'll fight it and I'll get angry. Oh, too. yeah. I'll angry. <laughs> but I'll fall asleep anyway. Yeah. And then I'll wake up kind of like, oh, man, I wasted four hours. I know. But actually, I, I got up and I was awake till two again. So, uh, yeah. you know, uh, so you sort of just replaced nighttime sleeping with daytime sleeping. Yeah, yeah. yeah I think that's probably good. So I, th- I think my future goal is to move into something where I'm not up at five a.m. Mm, totally. and then where I'm more out and about and doing more stuff like this. This this really fuels me. I mean, I yeah. can't believe it's like. I went to bed at 2, got up at 6.30, and I was ready to go. Mm-hmm. You know, just kind of like, I mean, it was a little rough waking up. I'm like, yeah. oh, I still heavy. And it felt like <laughs> I want to go back to sleep. But I'm like, oh, no, this is cool. This is something I really want to do. And then the closer I got, the more awake I got. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah I, I, I do the same thing on, because we get up at, we usually meet at 8 o'clock on Sunday, and it's like my first day of my weekend. And I, all I want to do is sleep. And then I'm like, ugh. What is going on? Why is my alarm going off? And I'm like, oh, podcasting. And yeah. then I, like, pop out of bed. Yeah. Like, that oh, noise? I'm awake. Time yeah. to go have fun. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I think we're actually really uh, we're starting to settle <laughs> into a really nice groove here, Yeah, too. I think I really so. Do. Totally. Well, it's one of those things, too, that, like, I've been thinking about a lot lately is, like, because I said I need a break from my job, and I'm sure my coworker is going to listen to this and then get really angry at me because I sound like I'm going to quit my job. I probably won't quit my job, but I've been spending probably. a lot of. Well, eventually I will quit my job. Everybody I'm not right. staying in my job for the rest of my life, but um, I will not be finding a job anytime soon. Right. But uh, but I've been thinking a lot about like what I like about my job and what I don't like about my job. And, like, because recently we've had, like, a lot of stuff going on at work that's been, like, really chaotic. 
and stuff I don't care about. Like I'm, because I'm primarily, um, well, my my title is clinician and case manager, and so the clinician part of it is supposed to be doing therapy with people with right. severe mental illness, and the case manager part is like everything else. It's like helping them get. DSHS benefits and helping them, you know, get a new bus card and, like, all the stuff that you do with people. And, um, lately I've been doing, like, so much of the case management stuff and also, like, stuff stuff that has to do with, like, housing that I don't care about. Right. And, like, one of my clients has been, like, doing news interviews for a bunch of nonsense reasons. And... And so, like, everybody's been, like, getting involved in that and just all this stuff that I don't care about at all. Um, and so it's made me kind of step back and go, like, I'm spending, like, 90% of my time on stuff I don't care about and 10% on the stuff I do, which is, like, spending time with people and getting to know them and, like, helping them reach goals that right. they have. And so I've just been thinking about, like, also, I work with very low-functioning population, like, people who, like, basically success for them is right. not being in a hospital. And so, huh. like, to me, that is a very low bar, and for them it's great. And right. when they stay out of the hospital, I'm over the moon, and I'm super happy that they, yeah. um, like, can do that, and for them it's very positive. But for me, it just, it bums me out and makes me feel like, like, there's nothing I can do right. for them, you know? And, and they don't have a lot of motivation in themselves. Like, a couple of my clients do have a lot of, like, they have goals and, and, right. and those are the ones I actually, like, really like working with. And so I've been looking at that and thinking, really, if I'm honest with myself, I need to be working with a higher functioning population so that it's people who have goals because right. Those are the clients that, like, I want to work with is, oh, I'm like, oh, you have an idea that you want to do. I want to help you with that in whatever way you I can. You want to facilitate them. Yeah. And, stuff like that. Yeah, and so I'm cool. like, which is kind of like, I took this job because it's like my first job out of graduate school and it's really good experience, but now I'm starting to look ahead at the future and think like, you know, I really need to like start getting back into like the reason I got into social work, which is like really like I want to work with like maybe college students or people who are like in a transitional phase who are like trying to better themselves and, right. and like, you know, and that kind of a thing. Cause really what I'm more interested in is like helping people reach those goals that they have. Almost like a guidance counselor. Yeah. Yeah. yeah kind of. Or just even like, you know, which, I mean, even, like, therapists, like, if I was to go get a therapist, my therapist would be doing that with me, because I'd be talking about, you know, whatever thing I want to work on. Yeah. So, I'm, like, I'm just starting to think about that now, of, like, what? Why did I get into this? I didn't get into this to chase people, like, to be in fights with people at the hospital, you know? Like, I have a client who has been to the hospital and, like, is so angry at me, because I'm the social worker, when really, like, I have nothing to do with why she's in the hospital. But, like, I'm just, to me, it's it's wearing on me to feel like the person who um, is the target of all of this, like, right, right. anger. Right. When really, like, the anger is about the person's mental illness. And, like, I keep separating myself from that. And I'm like, you know, this has nothing to do with me. So it's okay that they're angry at me. But then when I really step back and think about, like, why I'm doing social work, I'm like, you know, I'd rather be working with people who aren't angry at me all the time. Right, right. <laughs> it, it makes your job that much better. Yeah, or, it, it, like, I am on their side. And, like, honestly, even the person who hates me the most of, of all the clients I've ever had, the one who hates me the most, I wanted good things for them the whole time. But they can't see it. Right. And it has nothing to do with me. Like, they just can't see it for right. their own right. reasons. But then I think, like, I, you know, it'd be nice to work with people who could see it. And Because right. I have, like, I worked at a college counseling center in Chicago while I was in, like, my last year of my master's program. And those people, like, they, you know, most of them saw that I was trying to help them. And, right. you know, and that, I think, to me is part of, like the cool part of being a social worker is feeling like you have somebody on your side. And so... It's also you know, helping them. I, 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 what I'm hearing from you is also helping, mm -hmm. you know, uh, when you 
you ha- you talk to those people that have a goal, have a direction, yeah. and then when you're able to help them make those connections, it's right. very rewarding. It is. Yeah. Totally. So it's, it's and like, I've been trying to, like, remind myself, like, I, but I realize now I've been, like, self-therapizing because I've been tricking myself into having higher satisfaction with my job than I actually legitimately have by going home and saying things like, uh, well, this person just doesn't see that I'm really helping them. Oh, you know, yeah, like I talk to, myself into feeling good about it. it. Yeah. yeah. But, but I think I'm going to be, uh, looking for something a little bit different in the yeah. next year or two. So but that's good. I, I actually, I admire that too, that you're able to be able to see it and, and, and actually move on because yeah. that, again, it's like people that I work with, the people like me, we get in those ruts mm-hmm. and I'm slowly breaking away from that rut. It's, oh, yeah. And that's a fearful thing too. Mm-hmm. That's a lot of fear to change. Totally. And then that's, that's what I'm trying to do right now as well. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I actually, I don't know your job, but I'm envious of it because of the fact <laughs> that you're taking 10 days off. I know. Well, the reason they give me, I get four, no, five weeks off a year, I think, including big, or holiday time. Okay. And then I get like three weeks of sick time. Um, the reason is that you burn out. Right. And even, I mean, I take all my time off and I feel myself burning out a little bit. I mean, all this stuff I'm talking about is like I'm describing burning out on right. my position, right. you know? Because really it's just, it wears on you. And especially when you're like, you're the person carrying the weight of a lot of crisis and a lot of distress and people in and out of hospitals. Like, it's a really taxing like, uh, yeah, like really taxing it job could to have. almost be that mental illness almost, if you're not careful, could be contagious. <laughs> I know. Well, they call that vicarious trauma. Right. Is you're around so many people who are telling you their traumatic stories, and then you start internalizing it. And I don't necessarily internalize, like, traumatic stories, but... When people are in crisis, anxiety to me, I'm like the, whatever the opposite of anxiety right. is, is me. And I just, like, when people are too anxious around me, I'm, I'm like, oh, I can't be around you because you're inflicting me with your franticness. And I, like, I avoid that. Right. And so I find myself sometimes avoiding my clients because they're so anxious. And then I'm like, oh, I can't even be around. Like, there's one person who's not my client who I just see a lot. And I, I, I avoid her because she's so anxious that even just talking to her for a few minutes, I like I walk away and I'm like, what? Uh, uh, I can't even deal with that person. Yeah, <laughs> it, it drives me crazy. Everybody has an energy. And yeah. You, your energy gets affected by people. It's, mm-hmm. it's hard to maintain that energy. Yeah. You know, especially if people are... are uh, yeah. Yeah. You know exactly what you're talking about. Totally. So I think we're like both kind of in that place where we're like trying to look ahead and see what like what the future looks like and then try to like steer toward it in whatever way we can. in a way it's kind of like we're at the same age where men go through that that oh yeah that way what am i doing what am i here what's my purpose the existential crisis yeah, yeah. where i got my yeah you know i went and got out i went out went and bought a mustang and you know <laughs> and that's why i call that my midlife crisis car but yeah. truthfully i've only had i've only driven v8 four door pretty much a v8 mm-hmm. two doors you know throughout my my entire adult life mm-hmm. um but now I'm getting to that point. Like I, I was content with just working, paying a check. But now I'm like, eh, yeah. There's more to this. There's more. I, 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 having a family does change that too. But um, I'm but, always at that point. Like, and and that's the thing that drives. Like you're saying about being in the rut. I'm the person who's like never you're settled. Not, you're never rutted. <laughs> and it. But it drives me a little bit crazy and it makes me like examine my choices a little bit more because I know myself and I go, am I just bored? Like, am I always that person who's like, once I sit with something, I'm looking at what's over there and then I run over there and I'm looking at that and then I run back. But, and I don't know if it it could be one of two things. Either I'm like, uh, like impulsive and unable to just like, you know, like be a person who's in a job for 20 years. I don't know if I have that in me or I'm just trying to find the thing. Like what, what is the point where I'm at a, like, 
doing the good enough job where because right. nobody loves their job 100% of the time right even like like uh, Tom Cruise I'm sure right. like it's, goes you know I, I really hate acting all the time drives I'm sure I, he has right. to do that but the job where most of the time I love what I do and I get something out of it right. and feel good you know I'm sure there's I know there's something like that out there but I just maybe I'm just hunting it too much I don't know. <laughs> I, I know. I know. I, I kind of my analogy is it's like you see something and you want that something so bad. It's actually so the pursuit of it becomes more of it's almost like you like the pursuit of it, and then once you get there, you kind of mm-hmm. realize what it actually is. Because from the outside looking in, right, it's a different type of. But once you yeah. get it, and you and you like, and then oh. you sit with it for a while, you're like, huh? Uh, now I'm not really that interested yeah. anymore. Yeah, like, it's true because like the kinds of jobs I think about, like, oh, this is what I would really love to be doing. I've kind of done them in some way in the past, but moved on to something else for some reason. You know what I mean? Like when I think about, like, oh, well. I, I really like working in colleges. Well, I've worked in colleges. You know, I've had two different universities that I worked for. And, like, why did I then leave those jobs to do something different, right. you know? Which, for me, it was like I was doing administrative work, and I don't want to do administrative work. I want to do therapy, and I want to teach students, and I want to do these things that require more education. But it's like I left something that was right. really close to the thing I wanted to do, and now I'm like off in this place way over to the side. It wasn't quite. It was, <laughs> wasn't quite it was yeah, quite. and I'm still not doing quite what I want to do, and so then it's like I'm like trying to, I don't know, like I took find a my way back. Job one time, I used to go. I used to be at, uh, despite my physical appearance now, <laughs> my physical build. I used to be a, a gym guy. Oh I used to yeah. Go to the gym a lot, and mm. I talked to the guys at the front desk, and I was like, you know, you guys. You guys are really nice, and I could do what you do. Mm-hmm. And so I applied and got a part-time job, and working for Bally's, which is no longer around. Mm. Um, and I did it, and I'm like, two days. And I was like, this is horrible. Oh, I don't yeah. ever want to do this. It was so boring. Totally. So boring. I didn't talk to anybody. Mm. And I'm like, oh. And it was way more, like, I had to answer the phone, and, and I'm not... And get on the intercom, or answer a phone in a, a specific way. Yeah. Say, hey, what's up? You know, you had to answer Bally's, right. uh, whatever. But, <laughs> and I would always fuck it up. And yeah. I was just like, and I'm like, uh, I finally, and I called the, the lady who hired me and was like, yeah, I am, it's not for me. I yeah. just like, I, I, I thank you for giving me a chance, but. I could tell right away. Two days was just it, it, that's. Yeah. I was not digging it. And totally. I, and I also did the same thing. I, uh, one of my earlier jobs, I worked for a cedar mill. Oh. That was also another one where two days. I was making six yeah. fifty an hour. Six fifty an hour. Nineteen ninety one. Yikes. Yeah, working on a green chain, working on a cedar <laughs> mill, and uh, now uh, uh, my hands at the end of the night were like porcupine up. Yeah, I'm sure. Were, Ugh. Two days, I quit. Yeah. I was like, yeah, screw this. I was like, that, totally. I, yeah, because my buddy he ended up working there for twenty years. Oh my gosh, yeah, like, that's yeah. crazy to me. Yeah, so oh. I, I do that a lot. Yeah, I mean, I mean not, not a lot, but this is a job I've had for the longest. Yeah. Uh, but after, but usually I'm like you. I I know three years, but actually I say three years. But I'm full of shit because I usually go to the same type of job. Oh, yeah. It's a warehouse. Right? Yeah. It's any, you can train anybody to do it. You, yeah. You get the order, you go out and you pick the part, and you put it on a truck. That's mm-hmm. easy, easy, easy. Totally. But it's just been different companies. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I would like to, eventually I'll find something that I'll just camp out in for 20 years. I still have a lot of years left, so. But who knows? Yeah, and as, you know, as the pop- population, we get... Uh, healthier and unhealthier at the same time, mm-hmm. but it, we live longer. Yeah, but unhealthier. I don't get it. I know our acute illness has turned into a chronic illness. Yeah. but we have chemicals that will help us stay alive. <laughs> it's true. So. so I think we're about out of time. We are. You know um, what we need to what? end our intro. We need a, an outro. Oh no. But when we we need to 
also announce who we are. I've been noticing. Oh, I know we do. We okay. Don't do that, so. But theoretically, the people have been listening the whole time. Yeah. Nobody has just tuned in in the last five minutes. Yeah. Theoretically. <laughs> but in case you're yeah. wondering, this has been from the coffee shop, and I'm Peggy Herson. And I'm Scott Clark. And um, is that good enough? Yeah, you can wonderful. find us on Facebook. Yeah. And Twitter. Even though I still haven't used the Twitter, I'm going to yeah. use it this week. I've actually seen. I'm going to tweet. On it. I've seen it. Oh, I have. I guess I have done because a few. It's a hooked up. It's yeah. Well, it's our tweet. Yeah, yeah. So it's linked. Okay. Yeah. So maybe we're sort of. I'm gonna use it specifically soon. You can also find us on SoundCloud from the coffee shop, and soon we will be on iTunes. I have a meeting set up to oh, have my friend help me set up the RSS feed correctly and post Excellent. to iTunes. So hopefully that'll be coming soon. And like us on Facebook. And I guess that's... Oh, you can email us at fromthecopyshoppodcast at gmail.com. So if you have any questions or any suggestions or anything, feel free to hit us up. All right. So thanks for listening. Huzzah!